All right. So welcome everyone to our virtual for our hybrid virtual in-person meeting. Um, it is Thursday, January 6th, and I'm going to call our regular select board meeting to order. First thing is set adjust agenda, and it looks like we need to add an executive session. Do we have to do anything else? No. Okay, so we need to add an executive session uh, to discuss um, some personnel matters, and that is... Uh, I don't remember the VSA citation for that, but one thir three thirteen. Okay, thank you. No, it's not three. It's yeah, three thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anybody have anything else? All in favor of adjusting the agenda to add an executive session at the end, please say aye. 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 Does the executive session include town manager? To include the town manager. Um, I don't, I didn't have a motion. I didn't hear a motion in a second. Oh, right. Motion. <laughs> okay. Motion to uh, add an executive session. What's the statute? Uh, yes, say 313. And um, to include the town manager. I can second that. Okay. Now, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. So that's everybody, right? Any nays? Okay, so unanimous pass to add that to the bottom of the agenda. Um, next up is communication from the audience. I'm not seeing any. Is Are, are you guys seeing any? No. no. Okay. We're going to roll into... Um, uh, approving minutes from last time, which was December, way back in last year, December 16th. I thought the minutes looked good. Do you have a motion to approve them? Wiz moved it. I'll second it. Wiz mute, moved it on mute. Woo. All right. And, uh, all right. So we have a motion to approve minutes as written. And all in favor, or do we have any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I think everybody was voting for that. Um, next up is town manager report given by David Upson. Okay. Um, do you guys have a chance to read the report? I can summarize it, or I'll just I'll just go ahead and read it. Um, I met with A and E and the state of Vermont. Um, revolving loan fund people. Uh, I have requested that they provide us, um, all a &E, they provide us with a budget for sludge removal in order to use a combination of the bond funds on top of the 425,000 the town has from the ARPA, which is half of the 855,000 if the board decides to use the funds. Uh, a and &E is currently looking for other funding sources in the form of grants to help with increasing cost to the project. We are currently on the state list for the 2 million set aside for pretreatment, which the anaerobic reactor cell qualifies for pretreatment uh, projects, um, but, is, but that money's not a definite that we'll get any of it. Um, Annie also suggested, and we can, I can delve into this a little bit more. It was at the end of our conversation but you guys can actually increase the bond amount by 200,000 without another vote. Um, and that also, uh, maybe Casey can explain more how the subsidy works, but basically it's a, that 2.2 .2 is a 40, there's a 40% subsidy there. So um, I got some numbers today from A&E and just, just with the one lagoon, if, there's, if they're gonna, split the difference in the sludge amounts that PNH Senesac estimated. And then we had an independent person come in, Vermont Rural Water came and did it. Um, they, and to be on the safe side, we went with a 500, um, 500 dry, dry tons, which translates into about 2000 wet tons. Um, without the trucking, it's 476,000 
$830. So um, I'm working to get the tipping fees reduced. I had a good meeting with Englobe up in Quebec and Casella is looking for sludge for their top, to top their landfill. So I'm, I'm hoping we can lower those tipping fees and try to get more of the sludge cleaned out. So, um, but a &E is concerned that the cost of construction is gonna be astronomical. So um, any, any extra money we can get is good right now, um, considering all the bids were higher than the bond amount in, in the first place. Um, so without going into too much more detail on that, I can uh, move ahead. Uh, any questions on that one? I just have a really quick question. What, um, we talked in our last meeting about how that might affect the timing for getting that subsidy. Is that still okay if we take some time to, time to find other funding sources? It, um, the state wants us to go out to bid in February. And oh, okay. they're pushing, A&E is pushing the state. The state is, um, is kind of dragging their feet a little bit, but they're also saying they need to get this done. So um, time is of the essence because there's going to be a lot of construction projects and we want to make sure that we can get a contractor. So we kind of need to decide that today, right? On, or on the ARPA? Yeah. I don't think so. I think that we don't know yet what we, I think we can wait till A&E gets a little more info and, um, we have a little more info about um, getting rid of the sludge. And also, when will we hear back about the um, pretreatment grant? Uh, Wayne Elliott sent out an email today. Asking? Asking, yep. OK. Yep. So this is all pretty, all this information I'm giving you is pretty hot off the press. Yeah. Yep. Um, Thank you for keeping it moving. Yep. Uh, any other questions? I'll move on. Okay, um, this, is a, this is a good one and a bad one, I think. Um, Matt Krajewski from our, our Lister consultant um, has received correspondence from the state of Vermont that our <coughs> common level of appraisal is at 88.45%. Um, when the equalization statistic falls below the state requirement of 85%, um, which is, will likely to happen in the next year or so, this will trigger another townwide appraisal. Um, which is rather costly, but it just goes to show that our property values are going up a lot of a lot of sales, um, a lot of growth. So probably every town in the state got a letter like that this year. Yeah, yeah. A lot of towns actually got letters saying that they had to do a reappraisal now. Yeah. They went below. Yeah. Why isn't the rule that you do it every ten years? Is that right? No. It, it ends up being about every ten years, I think. Do we know how long it was since we did it last? I think it was 2016. 2016. 2016. Yeah. 2016. So um, the NEMC is currently scheduling out to 2025. <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the queue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and they're going to prepare a proposal for us. Great. Uh, but we figured uh, rough estimates, 150000 we were just give or take. Of, yeah, we were just sort of just math in our head a little bit, but we don't really know. But we do have a reappraisal fund that we get money from the state every year yep. from. So we, we should be in good shape. Okay. Uh, any questions before I move on? Okay. Um, today, uh, I was contacted by a representative from the Rural Community Assistance Partnership, RCAP. Solutions. Our CAP Solutions is a company that receives funding directly from the EPA and the USDA rural development to assist towns with training and technical assistance. Our CAP Solutions is also launching a pre-development accelerator program in support with the Milken Institute and the Economic Development Administration to assist communities with navigating and accelerating local community infrastructure project development. So this is I think something that they're putting out there to assist with all this big flow of money coming out to be a little bit more efficient. Um, so if accepted, 
the participants of their program will gain a clear understanding of how to navigate federal and private funding sources for project development and conduct pre-development activities to be ready to apply for funds to complete projects. So basically, they want projects that are shovel ready and they want people to know what they're, how they're gonna manage the projects at the town level. That's, that's kind of how I interpret this. Um, I have to submit a response to our CAP solutions by next week if we are interested in participating. Uh, submitting the interest form does not automatically get us accepted. So I just, I think this is a good idea and I think that we should move forward with it. Um, it's only gonna get us better, more knowledge on how to get some of these big projects taken care of a little bit more efficiently and without having to rely on outside resources as much. I think it's certainly worth looking into. So what projects would you propose or you haven't figured that out yet? Well, I mean, we have a lot of projects coming down the line. We have projects that are still in need of planning. Um, we also, you know, we have uh, the potential for the, um, the town garage. That's a big project. Um, but I thought you said it had to be shovel ready. So don't you have to have the plan already? No, no? This, this is just like the pre-planning to that. Okay. And, okay. And, and training, it's training to, to better prepare yourself for that. So it's actually just like a, it's an educational opportunity to be able to handle and manage these big projects um, at the municipal level. Cool. That's how I interpret it. Okay. So I think it's a win-win. It's not, nothing's gonna, we don't have to, it's not, uh, there's no cost. Mm -hmm. So they're, it's, they're funded by the, the feds. So OP, do you just need a nod from us to go ahead and do that? Uh, the, or is it kind uh, of like no. Yeah, it's not, it's not like informal, I would say, but I would, I would uh, appreciate your approval with this. Oh. So the, does the select board generally agree that the town manager should, should pursue uh, this opportunity with RCAP solutions? Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Thank you. Um, and then uh, last but not least, this is a public service announcement, but also I think this is a great project. Um, I think Sherry might be able to speak to this too. Uh, the Central Vermont Solid Waste District is pilot a program, piloting a program and partnering with Black Dirt Farm and Standard to set up composting sites within the town. The plan would, would be to have a number of compost receptacles at host locations and allow neighbors to access the receptacles to dispose of their food waste. Each participant would have a small fee, two to three dollars a week, and the host, the host property could potentially get uh, the service at no cost. Um, standard operating procedures or practices and training will be explained by Black Dirt Farm. And Black Dirt Farm is looking for at least five sites in the town. Um, so I would say contact the town manager's office or Tom Gilbert at Black Dirt Farm with any questions and or to participate in the program. So. Um, yeah, it's actually that so they applied for a grant through the solid waste district and they received that grant and um, so they're looking to place these in uh, concentrated neighborhood areas and um, so the whoever has the is the host in the neighborhood or whatever um, needs to be able to offer up roughly four by six feet yep. of space for the bins and the and um some signage and stuff like that and then but yeah it's totally uh, we're the solid waste district was excited to go ahead and give him this grant but they gave it to him last spring and we ran in, he ran into problems because he initially it was going to be a, a driveway pickup type thing but um he didn't have enough uh, people to run trucks and pick up at everybody's driveway. So he he reworked it, and this sounds like it's going to be a good uh, a good run at it. So. They they had something similar down at uh, Richard Brochu's a couple years ago. Yeah, the, that was a true pilot. Yeah, but this is actually Black Dirt Farm, and you know, making this thing happen yep. um, with some grant funds from the Solid Waste District, but also from others. So other 
like sources. So, because he's doing it in other places besides Hardwick, yeah. but he's looking for people in concentrated neighborhoods. So, like for instance, in my neighborhood, I do believe that um, Wiz Dow is going to offer up some space for us to have a neighborhood compost. I've already talked with Tom. Nice, thank you. Um, if you hear of somebody, let me know, and I'm gonna do some uh, do some homework and get in touch with some people. Um, I think East Hardwick should be an, uh, either one or two sites, um, and and then um, in the village of Hardwick, I've got a couple of locations. Yeah, because the idea is not for everyone to come to our neighborhood, but actually to have a few around. Just well, I'll tell I'll tell everybody to come to your neighborhood. No, I have a question about this. Go ahead, Mike. My question is that what about like I'm a huge fan of centralized compost collection. I, I do see, however, there are some areas where perhaps the residents who most need the services, it may be a negative financial impact to them. And are there subsidies available potentially for those types of areas? Well, if two dollars a, a week is going to be a negative impact, surely we can figure something out. But I think this is the first try and that's the only way he could do it was to have some little subscription amount. And, and basically what I figured that would be was his gas and fees to pay somebody to come and dump the composting containers and, and purchase the amendment and clean the containers. But yes, I think I think that we can, if it if it's that much of a hardship for a family, we can definitely come up with some sort of an idea or plan to move forward. If if that's the only thing that's stopping, I would be on board with that. Right. I would just add really quickly a great way once we have those sites to advertise the program would be through the schools because the schools have also done a lot of work around composting. So, get, especially as we have so many families who live right in the village, so. Once we feel ready for that, uh, which might be a while from now, but that would be a good way. Um, and maybe students can kind of lead the charge on how you compost at home. And Opie, you may be aware of this, but I know that Cheryl Michaels has been in touch with yes. Tom also for East Hardwick. Yep. That's it, that's, that's my report. Yeah, all right. Questions. I just had a really quick question, Opie, about something not on the list. Is there an update about the um, the cannabis group and how that's going? Yep. So we had our first meeting uh, uh, last month, just before the holidays, and our second meeting, I believe, it's scheduled for the twentieth of January. Um, we're going to have a guest speaker at that one. Um, let me just make sure that it's the twentieth. But yes, it's moving along. We're gonna have two. We're gonna have two more meetings, um, and then the last meeting we're gonna have somebody from Lamoral Health, uh, Healthy Lamoral Valley. And then we're planning to produce a document, document similar to the one that, similar in, in nature to the one that was provided for the charter change for to float around before town meeting. Okay, awesome. So we're planning on getting that like out through front porch forum and various yep. things beforehand. That sounds great. Yep. The second just simply needs to be on the warning, like for a vote. I think they, I think the select board needs to decide uh, if they want to have that vote, right? That would yeah. be, that would be an Alberta question. Yeah, no, yes. The select board needs to decide to put it on the warning. Which, Which has to be done by next meeting. Next meeting, mm -hmm. yes. Sorry. So it's the 26th, that's the next task force meeting, the 26th at 6.30 by Zoom. But, the, but at our meeting on the 20th, we have to vote on adding it to the ballot, right? To the warning, yeah. To the warning. Yeah. yeah. Which I think that would be, I mean, I think that'd be the best time to do it. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions for Opie? Uh, road, the road foreman report is that they've been working on the roads. Yep. Okay. How are the trucks? I, I will say um, that I was up on the Montgomery Road 
on the second turn on the Montgomery road last weekend. And, uh, I did notice that, uh, that bumpy section. So that's something that I'm going to be having a conversation with Tom about, um, and coming up with a plan to, to resurrect that. That's really funny. You mentioned that Opie, cause I was also going to mention that I, I took Montgomery road a couple of times and it is rough yeah. going down the center road. There, there's a spot not as bad on, um, on the, the hill between Bunker Hill and, and West Hill that goes up and there's just springs in the road. And this time of year, that's what happens. So it's an issue. So you'll you'll uh, keep that on the radar for repair next summer if possible. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, next up is, uh, Police department report. Do you want to give us that too, Opie? Um, we have uh, a little bit of a staffing shortage right now um, due to COVID. Um, and we have three shifts Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have three short shifts. Um, and I've got uh, VSP St. Johnsbury to have, they've committed to covering any life safety emergencies. Uh, I'm also going to be available to the officers overnight on Friday and Saturday night for right. consulting. Wow. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for pulling that all together. I know that, yeah, the department is light to begin with and sort yep. of trying to, when you have people out unexpectedly, it's hard, yep. hard, hard to staff it. We'll get, we'll get through it. I've yep. got full faith. Yeah, good. All right. Next is the electric department report. I, am I correct in thinking we don't have anybody? Yes, I did actually talk to Mike today. Um, he will be coming on the 20th at the next meeting. So Okay. Yeah. So I I hadn't had confirmation, so I put it on the agenda, but he's coming next meeting. Okay. Did anybody else experience a power outage today? Yeah. Yes, but we have a generator, fortunately. <laughs> right. Well, it was out at the library, but Liz, you said that you didn't have any power outage, right? No, I was fine, and the okay. depot was fine, but Chris Lance came in today, and she said that there were places in East Hardwick that were out of power. Huh, so it was spotty, but it lasted maybe a little more than an hour, right? I think yep. so. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to hear a little something about what that was all about. Next. Yeah. Ours lasted about 20 seconds till the generator turned. Oh, off. yeah, yeah. Don't rub it in. Well, yeah. <laughs> the same with Hardwick Electric. They have a generator too for their office. Yeah. But the library was totally down and they had no phone because they also have a phone that. Voice over IP. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving along, item one, select board to discuss town meeting 2022 and if it will be in person. And Alberta had sent us um, an email earlier with some updates and she's here with us now. So Alberta, why don't you fill us in on what's happening with town meeting? So I heard back from the Secretary of State's office and they are working on a legislature, legislative article right now to do the same thing they did last year, which is give towns the choice as to whether or not they want to try and meet in person or try and do everything again by Australian ballot like we did last year. Um, it hasn't obviously finished yet, but I think that they're moving with it quickly so that towns have that choice as soon as possible. Um, you know, I just want to get some feedback from you guys on where you think you're at. Obviously, if we go the Australian ballot route again, I will again be asking that we use the, the tabulator and the and to count because we want to reduce that at the end of the evening. I also think that the school districts, if if they go this way or if we go Australian ballot way again, I think they're going to look into possibly being able to have a tabulator system as well to deal with theirs so that we don't have four to five hours of counting at the end of the night. 
So just looking for some feedback from you guys and I'll answer any questions that I can at this point. Anyone? Alberta, I have a question. Um, if it were to go with the Australian ballot again, obviously there's a pretty significant expense associated with that and programming and tabulator. Are they indicating that there might be any funds available for compensation as there was last year? They have said nothing yet, okay. Casey. I'm guessing that that's all part of this, they, um, you know, this item that the legislature's working on, but literally all I got today from Lori at the Secretary of State's office was, yes, they're working on it, and she'll get back to me as soon as she can with any more information. Thank you. Last year, I thought last year it cost us, uh, uh, it was like less than 5000 was that right? Um, yes, but in return, the state of Vermont actually, reimbursed. yeah, but the state of Vermont actually reimbursed us for, for pretty much all of the, not only the tabulator setup, et cetera, but for the um, mailing and all of that stuff. And I'm guessing it probably would happen again this year, but we don't have a confirmation on that yet. And our turnout or, you know, our virtual turnout or whatever that we had last year as compared to a regular year, it was, was it similar? It was a little higher, um, mostly because we, we made the decision to send a ballot to everyone. Right. Um, so there was a lot more absentees returned than say in other years where they have to request themselves. Um, so it was higher, but, um, you know, not general election high by any means, so. Well, voter turnout was higher, but we had a Zoom, you know, virtual, I think you said virtual meeting. We didn't have a t particular number of attendants at that. Did well, we? no, but I was just curious about how many people voted. Right, yeah. So it's just different, not virtual. <laughs> yeah. So, but most people, I think most people voted absentee. Yes, we had a very minimal amount of people that actually voted at the, at the fire station where we were polling. We did have a lot of people come in and physically drop off their ballots to ensure that they got back there, but not so many that actually took a ballot and, and did it in the, in the fire station while we were there. Alberta, when do we, do we know when we need to decide yet? So you will need to decide before we sign the warning. So my thought was that if we, if you guys wanted to, you know, take this time to think about it in the next couple of weeks, if we put an article on the beginning of the next meeting's, um, you know, agenda to talk about it in the beginning and then sign the warning at the end, that would give me time enough to make an amendment to the warning that however we were planning to do it. Isn't the next meeting the deadline for all the warrants that have to be on the ballot? It is the deadline for all of the appropriations to have their petitions in, yes. So is that also the deadline for whether we're going to have retail marijuana on the ballot or not? Uh, yes, I, I believe anything that you guys want on the ballot for this year will yeah. need to happen so that we can sign the warning at that meeting. Unless we want another meeting after, because we could technically push out till the 30th or something. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Let me just check my calendar because I can't remember for sure, Eric, what the date was. Somewhere I read the 30th is, I think it's the 27th. I think the 27th is the 27th or 28th is the drop dead date on screen. So we do have room to have a special meeting if we needed to. Right, if for some reason we had to, but the most convenient thing would be to have everything lined up for next meeting. For the 20th, yes. Do we have any, so and, that's- And the... more specifically, <laughs> sorry, and more specifically, it'd be better to know by the 20th, which way you wanted to go with town meeting because I then need to get 
in touch with LHS to worry to get the ballots ordered, to get the cards ordered, the machine. So there is a timeline on that also. Sure. Um, does anybody have any uh, thoughts so far? Um, I do. Yeah. It just seems that that out of what is being called an abundance of caution, um, doing it as we did it last year feels responsible. That if if this particular Omicron variant does in fact go in in waves with with high sides, it may have passed through the community by then, but we're seeing it taking effect now and it's only five or six weeks till town meeting and it just feels like like it would be a good thing to put off a virtual a, a, an in-person town meeting just one more year and hope it's over by then last year we were i know I was, we, I was sure last year, I was like, yeah, it'll definitely be over by next year. Right. You would have thought, wouldn't you? Nice. Well, and it's not like we can hold it at the school, even if we did decide to do it. I mean, really? we're not prepared to hold it anywhere else, are we? As of right now, the school has still said yes, that we could do it in person there. Um, they did say that they have some pretty strict mask protocols that will absolutely have to be followed. Um, but they have said yes up to up to this point that we could. Hmm. Yeah, I would honest. agree that we just do it the same way we did it last year. <laughs> but we Bailey. don't have to decide tonight. No, that's, we don't. But that's just you know, where my mind is at the moment. I thought I heard Kaylee start to chime in. Yeah, I'm just going to say that if we have a couple weeks to think about it, it would probably be worth asking the school I know one of the big things that we've done at the school is trying to maintain the capacity in every space. So if we have to limit the capacity of the gym, which means we might not be able to have everybody who wants to come in person, that I think also is an equity, would be an equity issue too. Like if we had to have everybody be three feet apart, I mean, even if we only have 150 people there, and I, I think we should just think about like, obviously it would be great to have an in-person town meeting, but if we don't have a space that can safely hold everybody, that's just a, an additional reason to be responsible, as Wiz was saying. I mean, another another consideration that we that we took up last year was that um, that there there are definitely are more vulnerable populations for COVID nineteen, and so those folks are gonna, those voters who are in those more vulnerable populations are probably gonna be less likely to show up to an in-person meeting too. Right. Um, just, you know, another consideration. So we'll wait and see, I guess, what the legislature comes up with. But what I'm hearing from the board is we're, we're very strongly considering that option if it's available to us. All right. That makes the most sense, so. It does to you too? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, I just have one other um, thing just on the timing. Uh, I know there's always a, you know, it's always a bit of a race to get the um, town report printed as well. So in that regard, it's usually better, like if we can have our decision by our next meeting, then that gives a, a little more lead time to get that all printed too, right? Yes, the yeah. town report is Definitely. actually due to the printer like five days earlier than last year. Um, because of mailing time has been extended and paper shortages and such. So um, yes, it's usually due like the 30th or 31st, but it's due to the printer by the 26th. So yes. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. All right. Thank you. And thanks, Alberta.
Um, if everybody's good, I'm going to move us along. All right. Next up is item two, select board to discuss the project of VASA plans to do on Wright Farm, Wright Farm Road using an RTP grant and a second item to discuss a trail extension to access the center of town. And we have Danny Hale here. I was gonna say live and in person, but it's not quite true. Um, but Danny, are you available to, or could you just give us a sketch and outline of the proposal for Wright Farm Road and for the trail extension into downtown? Yes, I can. So we'll start with Wright Farm Road. Um, so several years ago now, we, we did, we reestablished the um, right of way for Wright Farm Road. The, the trail that was being utilized was actually on private property, both on uh, McAllister's side, which would be the west, and uh, and uh, Kenny Davis or Chris Davis on the on the east. So we reestablished the uh, the right of way. Um, it that that section. So let me start. The first section is from the trailhead uh, to the to the rail trail that section just needs some material added to it it's just simply been worn away um, up the hills pretty good and then we get to that section that we laid out a few years ago and that needs to be um, needs the, the most of the work is in that section so basically it's an rtp grant which is a recreational trail program um, that's funded through transportation dollars it's a gas tax on motorized recreation um, and is funneled back through forests and parks uh, to trail groups. <clears throat> so that's that project, um, an, an overview of that project. Uh, what <clears throat> at this time, so I have a budget that I shared with you. Um, a couple of things is the, so the budget is, is a best guess estimate of cost. It doesn't necessarily narrow us down to, to um, you know, the exact number of hours per unit or, you know, certain type of material, because we list something on this application doesn't mean we have to use that. We just have to use an eligible <clears throat> expense. So um, it's a pretty, pretty rough, uh, you know, guesstimation of what it'll take. Um, and, you know, it, well, all I need from the town actually is just that uh, there's also what they call a class four road resolution, um, which gives us permission to do the project. And it's a town's commitment for to allow uh, recreation to be on that um, structure, whatever the project is, um, for five years. Um, so that's kind of the quick and dirty on it. Um, we've done a couple of RTP projects in Hardwick. We've done that one, um, previous one up there, as well as the Hardwick Woodbury Rail Trail. Um, so, questions on that? So, what I all we really need now is permission and that signature because of the all the URSA money that was dumped into. The grant administrator's lap at Forest and Park, Sherry Winnie. Uh, she's still funneling through all that stuff. So the actual grant cycle for RTP has been pushed back um, to the displeasure of some, especially me, um, just because it's going to throw the grant cycle out of whack, just like Irene did. So it's, there's a good chance that this project might not get fully. You have to have a fully executed grant before you can start anything. So, given if they drag their feet and or it's not, they're not dragging their feet. She's overwhelmed. It's not. It's not the fault of, of the of her uh, or, or any employee, but <laughs> it's the way it is. So, this very well might not get completed until the following summer. Um, that's that's about what I have. But, yeah. So I just want to um, call out. So thank you for your work in the past on that road, and um, because it is, it's a it's a great great asset, I think. Um, uh, and just to point out that you're doing work in the as as VASA, but this will be a 
improvement for the trail for all or yeah. for uh, the class yeah. four road for all all users right right yeah. um you know that we're certainly going to make it so everybody can use it that's what we do i mean we do yeah. this all over the state it's what i do uh, you know all the time so we it's not going to be a road uh first of all we can't call it a road because that would we eligible for trail funding so it's definitely not a road for us it's a trail um but oh it's, really yeah yeah that's so, it's a, in so in your case it's it's a, a so in your case it's a trail that happens to align with a class four road yeah. for a distance right it's basically yeah. the right of way, down the right away yeah right. And, and and we're one of the one of the guy one of the rules is um it has to be it can't be for for low clearance vehicles so you can't build a road um it's supposed to still be for high clearance vehicle motor vehicles so it can't be used to upgrade a class four road to make town road standards. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it can be upgraded to the point where everyone can use it. So when we get done, when we get done this time, so we we were low on funding. And honestly, when we did it before, um, I didn't have the equipment or the knowledge or the manpower to do it the way it'll be done this time. Um, it's pretty narrow now. You can't get a vehicle down through there now. They can't get the groomer down through there now. The, the snowmobile trail still goes on to Kenny's property um, because it can't get down through that section. We basically got it so you can get an eight, you know, a six foot wide trail down through there. Um, we've been through the stuff. So this time when we go through there, we'll be realigning some, some ditches um, and, and making it so you will be able to drive a Jeep down through there. Uh, the groomer will be able to get down through there. Um, you know, it, it'll be much more similar to the rest of it. I mean, Eric's been up there and seen what the rest of the trail looks like, that section. Um, and, and then we're going to go all the way to the top, to Buffalo, um, the Buffalo Mountain Trail. So um, it, it's definitely an improvement for everyone to use. No one will lose the excess. Everybody's going to gain. There's a surprising amount of water up there, considering it feels like you're on a ridge. Yes, there is, and it, and the and it's not surprising to me, <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, you know, the top of it all the way down through there, where it's literally four or five feet lower. The the trail treads four or five feet lower than the, the original grade. Um, that's all erosion. You know, that thing was all on top of the ground when the first horse went down through there. So that's all down the hill now. Um, and it's basically bedrock. And that's why there's quite a bit of it that we won't do much to because it's, it's very wet and it's the lowest point and all the water from everywhere runs down it. Um, in that case, we just, it's on bedrock. It's not gonna go anywhere. It actually works well for us. The other side of Buffalo Mountain Trail is the same way in several spots where over the years, the erosion has already gotten as deep as it's gonna go. It's on bedrock. So. Um, other places we will we will utilize that section of bedrock where it's lowest grade and cut a water out so it can get at the water will go out and then build a, a broad base dip so that the water won't run the whole length of the road any longer. It'll it'll exit. Um, and so everyone knows, you know, I just got my project review sheet back today from from uh, DEC. So, you know, we'll have to work through, I'll have to be up there with the stormwater people and, you know, the, all the permit people will have their, have their tour of that. Um, it's not like we just go up there and whack it. We do it. We, we, we have to do it right. Which is, which is, if you do it right, you don't have to worry. <laughs> so I'm all about it. So you, so you need us to, we, we sign a um, yeah. Yeah, conference right. of some sort. Uh, yeah, it's called the Class Four Road, uh, or actually, it's the RTP Program Project Resolution of Commitment from the Municipality. And can the uh, can the town manager sign it? Yeah, yeah. If you guys wanted to make a motion to have the give him the power, that would just be cleaner, probably. But yep. any any authorized person can do can do it. Yes, I can make that motion to authorize the town manager to uh that's different <laughs> do what danny just said yeah. <laughs> don't make me say it again either it, um, was, it should be in your packet i shared it with you okay. yeah we have it 
So I guess, so would be to authorize the town manager to move forward on the RTP, RTP. to uh, 2022 for the Wright Farm Road. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Any, any more discussion on that project? All right, uh, so. For the second one, I was trying to pull up here. I Wait a minute, we got a vote. Hang on. Oh, so all, right. all in favor of, uh, of um, directing the town manager to sign that um, RTP paperwork, please say aye. 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 Any nays? That's everybody. Awesome, that's good. Part two. All right, sorry. I, I somehow lost it. I'm trying to get pulled back up. So, so the second thing is uh, I was approached um, about, so currently, um, the ATV. So let me back up. Vasa has a uh, um, Vasa. There you go. Vasa has a, a what they call a master license agreement with the Agency of Transportation to, uh, and that's how they how they and we manage uh, use of state highway as connector trails, a uh, connector to trails and to services. That's basically what that's for. Um, so uh, I was approached about, currently we have from Magville Road south to Cary Road uh, is open to ATV use through that license agreement. Um, and I have been approached about having from Magville Road to um, the center of town um, to the red light um, opened up. So this is this is the paperwork to do that. Um, the way it works is so this is kind of a unique situation because it's the state highway and it's no different than the paving and Wolka Street bumps and it's the state highway, um, but the municipality actually plows it. So there's debate whether we actually need this document or not, but we're going to just get the document and that way we don't have to worry. Either way, uh, the most important thing to the agency of transportation, um, two couple important things, safety on their end, they're the ones concerned about safety. And um, if the community or the municipality is in favor of this or not, that's, that's also a huge. So those are basically the two biggest things that are looked at. Um, there's some crash data that will be looked at, um, but I don't think any of that has to play in this. So this is simply the paperwork um, to, to allow, to submit to Agency of Transportation to allow ATVs to travel to the red light. I've got a bunch of questions about this one, Danny. Okay, dokie. Mainly because I don't know much about what we already have. Yep. And this is your wheelhouse, not mine. But yep. um, I'm just wondering how, because the other loop, it looks like with Macville, like it's an actual loop. How do we enforce anybody st actually like stopping and turning around at the red light from like going into other parts of town? If that's what this is showing us, like. Right, that, um, that would be no different. That's no different than going to, turning onto Macville Road. And you know what I'm saying? That's, so the loop up in Macville just goes up and loops Macville and comes right back down. So it's essentially a dead end as well, um, as most all of our trails are. So it, there's nothing really different uh, than this and any other trail. It's, it's just an extension. It's no different. Um, it's from, from that angle of enforcement, it's no different than any other place where our trails stop. There's just not much of a turnaround spot at that red, at that well, red light. Like, Right. So can I can I jump in? You sure, sure can. I wish you would. <laughs> okay. Um, so the the plan with this spur off of the existing trail was for um, recreational vehicle users to access the center of town, the businesses, and the downtown. Um, I've spoken to uh, uh, Mike Gothier, who has um, allowed, who will allow parking. Um, in his parking lot on the weekends for this. And really this is a way for users of the VASA trails to 
access the downtown. Um, this is going to be this, this spur is not opening up the entire village um, like other towns have done. Uh, Newport has done it. Um, so this is really kind of a, a way to control um, how people are going to react to, to being able to drive on South Main Street. Um, it'll be enforced. These vehicles will be enforced by any all of the Vermont uh, Title 23 statutes um, to include helmets, liability insurance, um, and uh, seatbelts. Um, so the, when these vehicles are on our roadways, they're, they are treated like a motor vehicle. So this isn't really um, for uh, the trail to go down into the center of town and turn around and go back, but it's really a way to get those users of the VASA trail down in the center of town to access the services. Um, and, we, and, and we thought that this would be um, a good trial. And um, obviously we'd have to amend. Go ahead. I don't know what oh. that was. I, I, I understand. I am. Um, I understand that. I guess I, my question is, um, like if for whatever reason, if there are folks who are driving into town and don't realize that, or they decide, oh, there's a parking spot down by the clip joint because parking right in front of the school is usually pretty tight, then like who's enforcing that? And I, I assume that's our PD who's enforcing it, but right. Yep. Parking isn't really enforced a whole lot in town. So that's just a question, like how do we... Um... Well, we, we, we would enforce it like we would enforce any other, any other Title 23 violation. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's the best I can, answer I can give you. Um, we would have to amend our ATV ordinance to include the South Main Street as well. Um, right. I just, it's great that Mike's going to offer a couple of spots, but like if there's a caravan of 10 ATVs, which would be super fun, yeah, um, that's going to fill up. That's like, there's not room at Mike's for that. Yep. So it's just a question. It's just a question of like, what are we taking on in terms of enforcing it? And um, that's the big question I have. Okay. Um, and then the other thing too is signage. Um, and then a lot of these users use the Polaris app. Um, so it would be the responsibility of the trail, trail folks to say where the parking would be um, and what's prohibited right. uh, in the center of town. So signage is big. Um, signage down at the intersection of the Mackville Road indicating that this is a access to the center of town um, and maybe we you put a little disclaimer in the app that says you know um, th this this area is open to parking and but it, it's definitely going to be um, I would say a, a work in progress and it's something that we can definitely you know we could close the trail if it doesn't work um, there are other towns that have tried some stuff similar to this and business owners are uh, pretty excited about it. Um, so I thought that maybe I had some feedback from some of the business owners in the center of town and uh, they would like to see this happen. So here we are. Is there any way we could do this on a trial basis? It sounds like it's going to take maybe a year or so to set it up. Um, you know, and then maybe give it a year to, to see how it goes? Or is this something that we start now and if it doesn't work, we stop later? That would be a question for Danny. Yeah, so first I, I, I must say that uh, I, I got to kind of get us back on track here. This isn't something that VASA or the ATV club is asking the town of Harder to do. No. This is something that the town of Hardwick is asking to do, and VASA and the ATV Club are providing the resources to make it happen. Yeah. So, from VASA's, from the executive director of VASA's seat, I I gotta I gotta just be honest with you. We're not going to be responsible for people downtown. You know, that's that's just I'm, we're not going to take that on for for any reason. 
you know, it's if the businesses want customers, then we will put we will help with signage. We certainly will help in re, with enforcement. We will, you know, we, we we do all the things that we do. But you know, I, you guys got to understand this. This is something that's coming from Hardwick to us, not from us to Hardwick. So the trail stuff, that's us. The other thing I want to say is, I don't want to jeopardize the relationship that Bass has with the town of Hardwick with the existing roads that we share over this thing. I won't do that. So if there's any hint of, you know, I, you guys all know me well enough to know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. If there's any hint or chance that this access to the red light is going to cause problems for Vasa or Kat, then we're out. <laughs> you know, we can more than help. I don't think there will be any problems. I think it's absolutely manageable. I think the number of ATVs you see in the village is going to be really small. Um, we, we're fortunate in our little trail system here that we have stores on both ends of the village and gas stations. Um, you know, so we'll see some folks up there, but it'll be honestly folks that want to go into town to utilize the services. That's what this connector is all about. I mean, that's why the state allows us to do these things. This is absolutely a connector to services. It's not a, it's not trail to ride. So we would love to do it. Uh, we certainly will take our share of the responsibility. But uh, yeah, that's with that being said, it wouldn't take a year. We would have this approval from the state, be able to do it in the spring. The ordinance would need to be um, the ordinance wouldn't that's I believe you have the power as a select board to do a trial basis without changing the ordinance. Really? Uh, well, maybe. Yeah, I'm saying yes. Well, it's 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 also not that hard to change the ordinance. And or, so or do it that way too. It doesn't matter, but it doesn't have to be permanent. I mean, you could do that. And I wouldn't have a problem with that as long as it's clear that. And hopefully that if this goes bad for some strange reason, we don't lose our longstanding, um, you know, where we don't have any problems. I mean, we're, it's pretty, I think it's pretty good around here. The only issue I have with people doing things wrong are the local folks that, the only, the only people you're going to see up in the village are the same ones you see up there now. <laughs> not, it's not going to be the Vassa people, you know, the people that come from somewhere else to, into our into any area, the traveling mass of people um, play by the rules, basically. Is there so, any way that we can, I'm just thinking about, I know, I'm sorry, I'm like getting stuck on this turnaround. Is there any way to have there be like parking in a turnaround in the diner parking lot? I, I, uh, I, I think that would be a good idea. And we just use the center of town, um, you know, to access that parking, that diner parking area. Um, in the parking around the center of town, but it, we didn't want to make it a loop. So we didn't have um, vehicles headed down Wolcott Street or headed up, you know, Route 15. So we had to kind of draw the line, but I would say that the diner parking lot is in play. Uh, obviously Bond Auto after hours, I can't speak for them, but people park there and use Positive Pi um, in front of the school. Mike right. Gothier, call the it insurance. Yeah, and that's easily, I mean, we have signage that we could put up for, you know, the first year or whatever, just, you know, that isn't costly. But I would think you would want to, you know, we would have no ATVs beyond the red light and allow them to take a left onto Wilton Street and then no ATVs beyond the entrance to the, to the uh, parking lot. And, and that's, you know, that's the rules. I mean, the people got to play by the rules no matter what. You know, no matter like Kofi said, no matter what you're driving, Title 23 tells you you got to play by the rules. Uh, maybe we'll get more uh, ticket ticket revenue too if they don't. Um, I get the ticket revenue thanks on this one. <laughs> yeah, we we can do that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say too. I think it's definitely something we need to think about, not just for Vasa, but also with the rail trail getting finished up. Like how you know, it's a really good opportunity to get snowmobilers. Um, to figure out how to get snowmobilers to stop in Hardwick for dinner or whatever. Um, and we've already been thinking about it in terms of pedestrian use, but there's also this like alternative vehicle use as well. So thanks Danny for 
helping to figure it out. I think we're I'm working on the snowmobile thing too. I've been for years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just the village of Hardwick is just all wrong. I don't know who put it there, but <laughs> it put a nice flat area on either side of the town and built a nice little village. I, yeah. I I beg to differ, Danny. I think Hardwick is right where it needs to be. Yeah, that's I. Yeah, it is, but I I agree with you there. It's still Main Street still is a pain in the ass, no matter how you look at it. Every time you want to do something. Danny, do you want names? Names for who put it there? Oh no! <laughs> oh, thank you, but I I would know who to ask Wiz if I wanted them. I, <laughs> I can give you names. And if you guys want to mull this over, you know, this, like I said, this is up to you. It, it won't be a long turnaround time. Um, I would, it would suggest, though, that if it's something you're going to do and amend the ordinance, that we do it early enough so that it'll be ready to go by May 15th. Um, that's the tentative date that our trails open if the ground is dry enough. Uh, and also, I believe that's the date we use in Hardwick for the roads currently. Um, and yeah, I, you know, like I say, I, I would support it, but I I didn't, it wasn't my idea, this one. <laughs> my ideas don't put it all up. Well, maybe before, maybe before we vote on it, we can get some like draft language around the ordinance. So that way, when we make a decision, we can make a decision about all of it. Does that make sense? Like, well, I think the ordinance is already there. All we would do is we have a list of the roads that are open. We, we just, just add to it. Add, add, we would, and right now it currently says from Cary Road to Magville Road. It would say from Cary Road to the red light. That's all. That, that's the only amendment. That, that was the. That would be the only amendment we would need. Now, if you want to open the ordinance all back up and look at it, that's fine too. But it's one of the first ones I ever wrote, so it's been around <laughs> damn near twenty years now. So, and it honestly hasn't changed much. <laughs> That's a good thing, right? It means it was written well. Yeah, well, yeah, it was copied. <laughs> it was copied well. <laughs> you know, I based it, it was based off um, what the league would let us get away with back in the day. That's where it came from, was the league uh, city originally. So, um, sounds like, well, I don't know. What, if, what if, What's your pleasure? I'd kind of like to read the ordinance first, personally, because I haven't. But okay. But if it doesn't and mull it over and punt it to the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got plenty of time, and you know, if I'm not present and you come to it and decide what you want to do, all you got to do is give Vopi the power to sign the bottom of it. Okay. Right, right under my name, where it says municipality, and then I email it off to the state and. Uh, They'll do their little thing. But like I say, being that it's this section of the highway is under your control as the village, it's in the village, not on the state. It, I know it's whatever you guys want. Okay. It's going to be their answer. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Danny. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you all. You're going to talk about the budget next? Yeah, Hank. Yeah, if you sit right there, we can. You know, I, can uh, I just have, I don't want to go through the whole thing, but I would go on record saying something though when it's time. Uh, okay, so hang on. I'm just let me introduce that, and then you can say something. All right, All right. thanks, guys. Wait, stay there. <laughs> All right, so um, we're gonna move to item three, and this is the business manager to recap the entire budget for fiscal year 23, and select board to consider approving. Um, as a final draft to present to voters town meeting in 22. So with that very small introduction and while um, Casey's bringing it up, Danny, you wanna make a comment? Yeah, so a couple of comments. Um, you said or, one. Uh, maybe one announcement. <laughs> one comment. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna run for Sluckman again just so everyone knows. Um, so I've been kind of- year, Danny. Pardon? One year or three year term? Um, I haven't decided yet. I'm trying to coax some other people into getting involved too. So I'm kind of letting them, um, you know, I, I may have to bargain with someone to drag somebody else along. So 
<laughs> I will give them first choice. To me, it doesn't matter. Um, either way, you know, and it doesn't matter if I lose, if someone wants to run against me either, that would be fine. Um, but I, it's important. I, it's important to me that I think I, you know, that I, that I do run. Uh, I do have some thoughts on things going on in the town that, that I don't think every, you know, people aren't hearing as much. And um, so the budget, I'm just concerned that in these times, when I look through this budget, I really saw, you know, we all know the, we all know the elephant in the room. There's, there's a big hole in the revenue um, that's, that's bigger than the cut in the police department. So, so we're burning up some money there. Um, we're throwing some more money in the pot with the, with the cash balance or, or balance, whatever it is. But I, when I look through the budget, I see a lot of the, a lot of the expenses, a lot of the cuts, a lot of the red have shaved the budgeted amount this year way too close to the actual from last year. And it's not going to allow for any room if something goes, just because we spent X amount of dollars last year on something, that's not 100% guarantee that it's going to be exactly that amount next year. And oh, oh, and previously when I was on the board, we worked hard to make sure that we didn't go up and down, up and down, ebb and flow. And, and what happens is, yeah, we get 1.5% increase this year. Next year, we got 7.3. Yeah. Is so that I'd, I'd love to respond to that, Danny, if that's okay. Uh, yes. So, um, so I totally agree with you. And um, even the current board has had that discussion about how when you, when you do a, a very small increase historically um, or a flat, then historically two years down the road, you've got a major increase um, to compensate. But, and, and I also totally hear you about like trying to adjust your budget amount to your last known actual plus a little bit right like and we, that's what we the way we've been running but what's been happening is that we've been at ending each of the last several years contributing more into the fund balance to the point where the auditors came and said you know this fund balance that you know that we used to tell you was too small now we're telling you it's too big so the idea with this is really to try to skinny it up so that we're not contributing to the fund balance for a year or two and just. I, I understand that, but for me, to me, you know, so I, you get to look at the police department revenue and I'm not picking on the police department, the numbers are there. If you look at the revenue income that's lost and then you look at the amount that the the expenses were cut. There's still what fifty, sixty thousand dollars difference there. Yeah, even a little so, more, I think. Even more than that. So, yeah. so we've lost that money. So that's half a year, you know, half a year, your fund balance you're adding anyway. And and I just think that I understand what you're doing, but I think we're overlooking the fact that that we're 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 keeping that rate where it is this year by making all of our other expenses too skimpy to the point where we overspend. I don't, I'm not, I shouldn't even be speaking probably because I'm not that up to date. I just started getting involved again. I don't know how much over the fund balance is over what they recommend. But so, I know two years ago we were, we were under, so we can't, I've only been gone two years, so it can't be that much over, I wouldn't think. So I think, I mean, Casey can correct me, but I think we're sitting at about 1.2 million in the fund balance. Yes, that's correct. 1,190,000. And our target amount is closer to like 700,000. 700. Yeah. Wow. So the idea wow. is that we would slowly draw it down a little bit. Um, so we have the 175,000 this year. Next year, we would shoot to lower that to 100, 125 to taper it off over three years so that it's not such a drastic change for the taxpayers. I, I'm going to have to look in. I'm going to figure something out because I've only been not a selectman two years. 
And you, you missed a lot in those last two years, Dan. Well, I, didn't, I didn't miss <clears throat> almost a half a million dollars worth. Like a general, generally. It went from, it, you know, we were not, we were close to where we were supposed to have been when I left. And in two years, we gained $400,000. Almost $400,000 in fiscal year 21. So why? Wow. I know when my checking account all of all of a sudden has this plush with money out of nowhere. I, I know why it is. And primarily in highway and PD um, were the biggest. Like, we had a milder winter, so salt was down, um, overtime was down. Um, highway came in over a hundred thousand dollars under budget in fiscal year 21. So so that yeah, so that's another problem. <laughs> why are we spending that money we're not getting shit done um yeah well, that's that's definitely another it, it, you could look at it in a couple different ways you could look at it that our systems are super efficient and we're doing the job or you could look at it that we're not taking projects on and spending money on on road maintenance and stuff like that you could look at it a multitude of different ways well, you can only look at it one way, Opie, realistically. Come on. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I don't believe for a minute that, that the town of Hardwick is running so efficiently in completing all tasks they should be that they bank $400,000 in two years. I don't believe that for a minute. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot the town should be doing, especially being the infrastructure guy that I am. Yeah. You know, it sounds to me like you got there needs to be some work getting done. Sounds to me way more like we're not very efficient. Okay. I gotta believe. I gotta believe that that the way this budget is reading, that in a few years, I, I believe that we are going to be behind the eight ball because we're going to have a reserve that's going to be below where we want, and things have increased, and the backlog of things that didn't get done to build that war chest are going to come back to bite us. But so, yeah, yeah, duly, duly noted. Um, I, I think it's worth looking at the even. Uh, even I don't want to pay more taxes, people. I mean, I'm all about the low tax thing. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm looking at it from a perspective of I know there's a lot of things that the town of Hardwick could be doing. Yeah, definitely. And but I think that when you look at this budget, it still is projecting a roughly 3% increase. Right. right. Yeah. So um, to the taxes, wait, but why am I looking at now? Um, oh, here we go. Yeah. yeah. So we're still, you know, we're still, it's not that we're trying to take the tax rate and make it like flat or negative or anything. It's, right. you know, we are still trying to work within that same framework of let's see. Uh, so does that, I mean, I'm just, I, these, I, I have a feeling, I got a bad gut feeling about this, really do. So does that, that worries me as well. <laughs> yeah, that, no, I, I think that's worrisome, actually. I do too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we're, yep. we're, our tax rate is still 3% and we're cutting stuff to the bare bones and we're throwing money out of the cash pot in there and it's still 3%. But but most of the money, the is, but, whoa. Mo most of that money that we're throwing from the fund balance is going into a capital fund or funds, right? Which is a good. I'm I'm I, I understand that too, and it's it's not so, just, just so you guys know. I don't think you're doing anything wrong. This is just what I think about it. What so what would hear if I was sitting there? <laughs> so my concern, you know, along these lines, is that this is a budget that like we're kind of rolling along steady and we've kind of been aiming at this 3% increase, you know, or below, and that's fine. But, um, you know, when social security came out for my dad this year, it said that they did, they had a 6.1, 6 6.6% 6 6 increase for the cost of living, which we haven't seen that. I don't know when we've seen that. So I think that's probably gonna bite us too. Like just the cost, of yeah. all of this stuff is is going to be moving at 6%, not 3% in a few years. Honestly, talking through it, you know, 
I almost I I want to I want to I want to use more of the fun balance. <laughs> 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 but I mean, it's just these are it's just concerns. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I yeah. I'm not trying to pick at anybody here. They're, they're valid. They're valid concerns, Dan. They are. And it's something we just need to you know there again. Why I decided that I'd want to give you know yeah get back in get back in the game because you know we we've worked through the years on some you know we've worked on this a lot eric i and sherry have worked on it for years um and it just like this one i gotta i don't know it's just yeah <laughs> so one of the, one of the things i tell everybody when i get a gut feeling and your guts the size is mine you <laughs> gotta pay attention the big feeling yeah. um add to that we've had like a big part of I think the fund balance in the capital fund is we at our last meeting we talked well we've been talking a lot about getting some of the projects done that we've been talking about like the town garage needs to happen you know a new roof on the municipal building needs to happen and yeah. we gotta we gotta money up to be able to do that um so I think that's a big part of putting like putting some more money in there maybe it should be more it probably should be more but we have put a like we've Casey's done a great job kind of getting us to a place where we can start maybe doing some of those projects. Um, and we, you see that more in the capital than you do in the general operating budget. Right. Yeah. And actually one, one huge driver of this thing though, really is that center road's going to need to be repaved and we aren't, we weren't anywhere near what we needed to be able to pull that off. Right. So that's, I mean, you see a hundred, uh, she's got up here, line 35, that capital road fund's got a hundred grand going into it more. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with all that. You know, it's, it comes down to, yeah, there's never enough money. Right. And we're also, what do we put, we, we've got a, somewhere we got a fairly sizable chunk that we're putting toward road uh, brush clearing yeah, on that. Yeah, I saw that. I actually paid quite a bit of attention to it today. Um, okay. One more question. I'm, I'm holding you guys up. Uh, and, and again, I apologize for coming in late. I know I know, I should have started this conversation, budget conversation, when you guys did. But. Hey, at least you're coming in, <laughs> which is more than well, a lot of people. Is there a, and, and is there a plan to, uh, what's the plan to make the police department not be upside down next year? Great question. I'm going to defer to our town manager. All right. I mean, I don't, I, that's kind of a hard, you know, I understand the caliber of that question, but we do recognize that next year there will be a, a, another big hole there. Yep. But, so my plan is I've started um, communications with Greensboro. My plan is to, to try to get that contract back. Um, really look at what the PD is about and what we're, what, where we want to go. Um, there's also the, the possibility of Wolka and Woodbury. Um, Woodbury is interested in potentially patrols um, and same with Wolka. Um, the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department, they're uh, Roger Marcoux, he's really big on regionalized policing, but his sights are set on Eden, Belvedere, um, and places to the west and north. So we're in a pretty good position to be able to work on the, our surrounding towns. Um, we have to get, you know, uh, you know, we have to hire some some more people um, to get up to a, a level where we can provide that a good service to the, those other communities. Um, so there has to be an investment there. Uh, and I know there has been a, a large one in the past and we need to maintain that. Um, but it's tough, it's tough right now because of the climate of law enforcement. So, and everybody knows what's going on there. So that would, so will, so it's been decided, or who would who would decide if we want if the town of Hardwick wants to be in the regional policing business? No, we haven't decided that, but it's it's an option, and we have we have the the asset of the police department. We have that already stood up, and we have 
um, you know, that that's in place. So we, we either, we either use what we have, we either use the assets that we have and, you know, capitalize on that, or, you know, we're at the mercy of another agency, which they're, they're lacking as well. So really the fundamental, you know, principle is public safety. And we need to maintain that because of the, our geographic position. Like we're, we're in a, a position that we need to maintain a police department. That that's where I stand firmly on that level. Yeah, I, I, I agree with the Hardwick standing on with a police department that is functional and affordable for the taxpayers of Hardwick. Yep. Um, I don't think what we have now is either. And I know for a fact, there's a lot of folks in this town that don't feel that we should be in the regional policing business because, you know, even if we get another contract with another town, what happens in the year where we lose that contract and bam, we're upside down again. Or more importantly, to your point, this isn't really the time to be in the policing business. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, you can't get officers and, you know, right. it's, it's, who knows? I mean, honestly, you know better than I do, but the whole mindset around policing and how it's done and everything is so up in the air right now. Yeah. Um, I, I just, asked, I just asked the, the town of Hardwick and I asked the, the, the naysayers and the people that are concerned to give me a little bit of time. Yeah. All right. That's why I just asked if there's a plan and you're working on it. So that's, that's fine. Yeah. I think I want to add one. I want to add one thing to that, which is that I think what we're seeing in this police department budget that we're looking at in this budget is that the effect of not having a contract with another town. So when you take the PD and you just try to serve Hardwick, yeah, it ends up being more expensive to us than it would have been if we were serving another town and sharing that cost with them. And we knew that. I mean, I know we knew that. You and I, I've been to. I know yes. the business, and I know the I, economics. I, of it. I'll, t I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now, Dan. This is this is real and live. Um, we're having a little bit of a staffing shortage with the PD for the weekend, and I called my counterparts over in St. Johnsbury, and I had to beg and plead with them to cover our town for a few short shifts, and it's only because of the relationship that I have with them that they did it. I believe that. I believe it's true. That's why I'm saying it's just, it's yeah. a rough business to be in. Um, and I do understand the economics and, and I, I, you know, I was, I, I'm for the police department, yep. um, but, but not everyone is in town. And, you know, if we can get something figured out, obviously that would be the best answer, but no, I mean, no, one, no one wants the police until they want the police. Yeah, <laughs> I know that. Well, I would just add too that, you know, Danny, we heard from, we've been hearing from a lot of people that they want to be kind of thinking about this as an opportunity to think about the police department, but also still want 24 seven coverage for Hardwick. And that obviously comes with a cost. So oh. this, this budget kind of like helps us continue with our PD for the year while we figure out what the future looks like and like right. the more feedback we get about what, you know, what works for people, I think the better. Right. Uh, I, I understand, and and you know I'm one of probably the odd people that understand that if we want 24/7 coverage in Hardwick, it's going to be substantially more expensive than it was when we had Greensboro, and you know, but I so I either I understand it, so my decision is, do am I good with you know some shifts not being there, not having 24/7, or do I want to pay higher taxes? I I understand it enough to be able to make that choice, but I agree with what I think I just heard is a lot. Everybody wants the police department for three dollars. It's you know, Superman. So it's like you, you don't get both people. So, and we did that exercise a few years, well, quite a few years ago now, where we asked the, the people of Hardwick, "What do you want? Do you want us? We, you know, this is not a new, it's not a new a, another. You know, once again, it's not new here. And, and when I was on the board, they resoundingly said, "Yes, we want twenty four seven coverage." Um, so. If we do, then we pay for it. And, you know, again, I understand that, but a lot of people don't. So I won't take up any more time. Um, 
with any luck, you folks will be able to hear a lot from me in the future. So good luck. Good luck with the race. If not, you probably will anyway. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. Glad you're jumping in, Danny. I'm glad you're jumping in. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for what you do. You all, you all doing a great job. Mm -hmm. I know it's not that much fun. So. <laughs> yeah, but it's well paid, right? Oh, it's a, my, I noticed that in the budget they have. Like, <laughs> they ain't getting no more money than they ever did. <laughs> All, right, All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thanks, Danny. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Um, so actually, I think that was really helpful. I feel like we kicked at the budget in a, in a bunch of places right there. Um, so. Okay. So um, just want to talk about there's been very few changes since we last presented a draft. Um, so I'm just gonna Casey, yes. would you take off your mask so I can hear what you're saying? Or move the mic closer. Or move the mic closer. So there haven't been a lot of changes since the last draft. I highlighted some. Um, I would like to talk briefly about the COPS grant position. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so highway, there were no changes since the last draft. Um, police department, I was able to get the final dispatch number, um, actual number from Lamoille. And so I updated that in both the police department and fire because they split that cost, not equitably, but proportionately. So those have been updated to the actual figures. Um, well, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, anything in yellow? And so coming back to the COPS grant, um, the officer that was hired to fill the COPS grant position has um, resigned, has given his notice um, and will be done shortly in another week or so. Um, so this does present some challenges for us because um, there was a period of leave and now they're not returning. The grant was due to expire on March 31st. I have spoken with um, the COPS agency and they did say that we can um, try to recruit somebody to replace. Um, there's going to be some steps that we need to take um, in order to get an extension approved, but we could potentially ask for a nine month extension, which represents the six months that they were gone and the remaining three months that we have right now that are not going to be utilized. So we could request an extension to December 31st of 2022 without a guarantee. Um, so what I've done is right now I put it at zero for no expense, no revenue without really knowing what's happening. They're gonna want us to describe what our recruitment efforts are gonna be, how soon we think we can hire somebody. Um, that's questionable. Um, obviously we could advertise for the position, but there's, I don't think there's a lot of people, you know, eager to sign up for police. We'll have to see what happens. Um, so we can leave it at zero or we can assume that we're going to post it and try to get somebody and then fill out the rest of the grant. We have, oh, 25 ish thousand left on the grant. And then we have like 30, a little over 30 as a match. Um, if we actually go through with that. So just your thoughts on whether we just leave it as we may not have somebody or should we throw something in there? Um, that we would have some expense for the first six months of the fiscal year and then some reimbursement. Um, we are- Definitely we are... gonna put in for the extension. That's, okay. That's the plan is to try to get the nine month extension so that we can utilize the rest of those funds. And we're gonna, we are gonna need to recruit, right? We're gonna need to replace the officer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so, I, oh, yeah. I mean, it seems like reasonable to have the labor expense. I don't know if we should count on having the revenue because it sounds like that's a bit up in the air, but maybe we can. Well, our representative felt fairly confident that given the circumstances and if we have, a, you know, if we, we have to write a letter to them detailing, you know, what, what exactly happened and um, that she felt confident that we would be granted it, but couldn't guarantee it. Well, I think that's enough to have it in the budget. Yeah, I agree. The, the, the budget's just a best guess. Okay. 
Well, so if we do that, um, what I would basically do is um, look at, um, we have, like I said, I think it's about 35 left that we have to meet and then we would get roughly 25 back in revenue. So if I wouldn't wanna do that whole amount though, I might do like 30 and 20 or something like that because we may actually fill it before the end of this fiscal year because we still have six months left. So we would have some this year and then counting on some the first six months of fiscal year 20. So I'm thinking we do um, 30,000 in expense and um, 20 in revenue as an offset. Um, we aren't in a position where there's a potential clawback for money already. Uh, I asked us. and she did not indicate that would be the case. Good. No. Good, good. I was very worried about that. And I was thinking, yeah, but I think we're, I think we're good. Okay. Sort of out of our control. I mean, we obviously wanted to retain the officer and just, yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So if we do that, um, something in there that does change obviously the bottom line yeah so that's a 3.43 nicole yes <laughs> i'm like i'm sorry i'm like trying not to shiver so I'm like <laughs> okay you need more bodies in there casey so <laughs> Up for you. Yeah, so I feel like my voice is quivering because I'm like on the verge of you shivering. Want you want a jacket? <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, I'm used to wood heat where it's like 78. I so. got long johns on, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, um, what so else? So other than that, um, there hasn't really been any many changes. Um, like I said, we throw that back in there that we would have some expense and some revenue and, and fingers crossed that we would be able to get that extended. Um, and I don't have any other changes, fire and line items. I'd updated the dispatch um, as we talked about the big increases. In, oh, I put cybersecurity back up. I had lowered it to a thousand and I decided that I need to go back to 1500. So that was just $500 difference. Um, and then, Oh, let's see. Let me just make sure. Um, I think last time I explained, we went over library, how they'll, they'll be using their fund balance. Yeah. Um, rec and trails. Um, nope, no changes there. So yeah, this is kind of where we're at right now, unless we want to make any significant changes. Sherry asked a question on email about, um, the amount we're putting into the uh, Cary Road property. If we could mm -hmm. just look at that quickly, just to review, um, because ultimately that we do intend to do something there um, for either, uh, I don't know. We don't know exactly what we want to do there, but it's likely going to entail, I would guess, extending water and sewer and possibly an access road depending on um, how we go yeah and in the town plan it we the discussions have been around trying to expand our industrial space but i just thought that putting something in there at least gets us to a place where it's not like we're gonna it's not like we're gonna use that building that's there um or other stuff. So it's going to cost us something to take those things down, even if we're preparing for some other future plan. So I just thought it it was hasty to, to completely zero it. But you know, I Casey explained to me why we would potentially do that this year, but I don't know. I just think it the, those look like bad zeros there. I don't know. Because it's obvious we're going to do something. It's not just going to just sit there. Well, so I'm just going to um, throw $1,000 in there and just see. I'm, I'm guessing it doesn't make an astronomical difference. It goes from 3.43 to 3.47. So that's that's certainly an option if we throw $1,000 in there. Um, and then that. at least and then at least that tends to roll forward. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to, but like inertia would have it that you, that would roll that we at least be rolling forward with that much. And yeah and then maybe the 16 at least is a little more if we get to a place where we need to 
take a building down or mm -hmm. you know, something like that. Or build a road. How long have we owned that property? Three years? Four. four I years. think it's about four, um, okay. maybe even a little bit longer. I think it's getting um, close to five, but it, yeah. it, I, I was going to look it up today. I mean, I've been here for about three and a half years and we had it prior. So I'm thinking it could be as much as four and a half years, somewhere around four, four and a half. So we are getting close to the five year mark. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just another argument for what we talked about at our last meeting when we have like the basically the expense plan for our properties, then we can, you know, right now we don't know what we're going to spend on that. So it's kind of this. <laughs> right. we'll save for something kind of attitude but hopefully next year we'll have a plan at least for a lot of our other buildings where we can say okay in 10 years we're going to do this and then we can make more accurate adjustments to properties like this yeah i have a little bit of a hope that maybe somehow the yeah i'm not even going to say that out loud but um, <laughs> come on say it out loud well, you know, I the solid waste district is looking for, uh, you know, they're talking about a hub and spoke thing, and they're looking for property to build their uh, 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 hazardous waste facility, and they've gotten bumped out of a property in Barrie because they couldn't, you know, I, I just think it's possible. I think it's possible. They think Didn't we already asked them to come to Hardwick. Yeah. Didn't we already ask them to come to Hardwick? I've, I continue to ask them to come to Hardwick. They feel like Hardwick is too far out of the central Vermont solid waste district area. But guess what? I drive to, to Barry all the time with my stuff and other people from Hardwick do too. So what's the damn difference? That's what I say. So, you know, and then, or if we were approached by a developer that wanted to create some sort of housing possibility in that area, we might need to clear it up. You know, I, yeah. I think we want to, I, I like the idea. I like the sounds of that. I don't know. But if we're just leaving it sitting there, then it's just sitting there. And I don't know. Is yeah, you're right. We should come up. We Yeah, it's getting close enough to that five-year mark that we need to start planning. Yeah. All right. Anything okay. else in the budget? I just want to give another shout out to Casey. I think we've done we've done so much in this budget from beginning to end. So thank you for yes. doing hard work. And I know there's reservations about it. Um, I feel good about it, honestly. Um, I have really felt like it's time for us to lean up those expenses. And if it backfires this year, lesson learned. But I think realistically seeing how much the fund balance has grown over the last three or four years. I think that tells us we've been a little too, you know, like creating too much of a cushion in some of these categories. And I think we're, because we have such a healthy fund balance, we are in a position to sort of run through this this year. And as I said, we're going to we're going to slowly bring that down and we're still going to keep that 20% level that we want. Um, and, and so I do, I feel good about the way we're doing it and it's going to be gradual and it's not going to be such a blow to the taxpayers. And I think that's really important. And also that it is, um, you know, our fiscal responsibility to put some of that money back into, into the, into the budget. So More uh, questions or discussions on the budget? You want a motion to approve? Or you want to wait till next time? We got a lot to wait for till next time. So I think it would be great if somebody wanted to do it tonight because <laughs> then I can move forward with the town report. But I mean, no pressure. Right. I mean, it's, it's just that also like Alberta has to prepare the warning and this all has, you know, so it's the the sooner we can have it, the better, I think, but that's obviously your call. Well. I can er motion to approve the budget for fiscal year 23. Second. More can discussion. you just say the amount, Kaylee, the total oh. budget of the 3 million, whatever it is? Yep, uh, where you just highlighted. 
The three million five sixty four eight zero eight motion to approve the budget of three million five hundred sixty four thousand eight hundred eight dollars for fiscal year twenty three. I think Wiz is seconding on mute. Mm -hmm. Can you unmute? Yes, second. There we go. All right. More budget discussion. All in favor of approving this budget to send to the voters at town meeting, please say aye. 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 I think that's everyone. Um, any nays? Yeah, that was everybody. So unanimously, the motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Casey. All right. We're going to move on. What are we on next? Um, sludge. So item four is all about sludge at the waste. Didn't didn't you already cover this in the town manager report? I did. Well, I did, but this is uh, this is whether we use the funds or not. I think mm -hmm. I don't. I don't uh, whether we're going to commit a decision tonight. I don't think they wanted to decide okay. tonight. Yeah, we can table that. But okay, we could the uh, while we're here though. Just to do a quick recap, those ARPA funds are pretty restricted on what you can use them for. One of the things you can use them for is water and sewer infrastructure. So this is clearly a, uh, like the whole water, the sewer plant upgrade, any part of it really would be a, um, a allowed expense. So we don't have to commit it right now, but I'm just curious, are we still, is a board, I, we, before I think, I had the feeling that the board agreed that that would be a, a reasonable use of the ARPA funds. Is... Yeah. The, yeah. Does it take them all up? We don't know that yet. It, well, the thing is that sludge removal is estimated at what, like 1.2 million if we did it all? Yeah. yeah, right around there. Yep. So, so we, yes, it would take it all. We yeah. can use it all and still not clean up all the sludge. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted to mention in terms of there, I've gotten some feedback from folks who have, uh, from various organizations and other, uh, who have gone to trainings, who are confused about the ARPA funds and have heard from the state that they are available for other things too. I know what we got from the state was like pretty cut and dry. So I'm not sure what other information is out there about what we can use them on. I think like in terms of our budget we put and something I thought on front porch forum that said like these are specifically the four things that it can be used for so I don't, I don't know how to and we talked about it at some meetings we had it in a memo I, I don't know how else to get that message out there because it is very clear through VLCT through any of the ARPA webinars that I've attended that it is specific. Those are the four things you can spend it on. So I, I'm not sure, Keely, where they would be getting that information from. It would be unlike the state to have varying information. <laughs> well, I mean, there's there's different buckets of ARPA funds that are being right divvied up. The the specific funds that we got the 855 thousand is for one of those four things. So maybe that's the way to say it is like the money we got is for this and we yeah. definitely have a project to spend it on. <laughs> yes. And, and the, this, okay. And the sewer project is right now hung up, uh, you know, partly because everything was more expensive than projected, but partly because um, the whole sledge removal was such a wild card and ends up being so expensive. So, if we using the ARPA funds may turn out to be the difference between doing the project or not doing the project. I'd, I'd like to know what, what else people want to use the ARPA funds for, like just, uh, just wondering, like, so like send them my way and we can have that discussion. It'd be cool to save a little chunk for some more public Wi-Fi or like some sort of broadband there thing in town. I don't know how much isn't there separate broadband. Yeah, they, yeah. they keep telling us not to use the ARPA because there's yep. going to be separate broadband money. So yeah. that's don't 
not say don't waste it, but don't utilize it on that because there'll be another bucket of money coming. There's, I think there's 40 million yeah. coming to the, um, the CUD, mm -hmm. NEK broadband. Cool. So, okay. So I don't want to spend a lot of time on this because we're not actually making decision. I just wanted to throw it out there and see what people thought. And if anybody was voicing any major concerns about directing the ARPA money toward uh, the sewer. <laughs> We're just going to send it down the sewer. <laughs> um, all right. So item five is select board to consider two road named additions slash changes. Which are they? Um, did you see Amanda's memo or her letter about, I'll have to pull it up and I can share it on my screen. Give me just a moment. I think I didn't I was looking for this and I couldn't find it. So, so the one in Wolcott, oh, there it uh, is on Cape Brook Road is Grouse's. They the proposal is to name the road Grouse's Crossing, and I believe the second driveway that would be turned into a road is located at gravel construction off of Route 15. There's a new building being built back there, and the suggested name was given as Blizzard Way. Um, and these are being turned into town roads or private roads? Private roads. Private Pri roads. Private roads. Yes, it's just that because when three or more owners share a driveway, so they basically have to just turn that into like a private road. So there's two, these two different situations, the one off Cape Brook Road, um, which is partly in Hardwick and Wolcott. So if you guys vote yes to that name, then the Wolcott Select Board will also need to accept that and then it would be cleared and then the other one of course is the gravel construction um which they're proposing blizzard way um and so if we approve that then they would just get named and go through the 911 and such so it's yeah but we don't have to plow them no 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 they're, I asked they're that still same private question. roads yep. they're still private roads it's just that you have to authorize these names should, uh, I, I'm good with this, but I wonder if we shouldn't be taking a look at that right farm uh, road that we <laughs> that we call a road that isn't a road. It's a class four road. Right? Yeah. Okay, it, so it's still a road. It is still a road. It's That's just that sure. Danny can't call refer to, he can't say he's improving a road. He has to say he's improving a trail that happens to run along the same right of way as the road. Okay. Okay. All right. So back to this. Back to this. You want a motion to approve yep. these two road uh, names? Grouse Crossing and Blizzard Way. Yeah. That's Sherry's not even me. a motion, Sherry. I'll make that motion. I, I don't love Blizzard Way, but you know, they like it. So that's all good. Yeah. I can second that. <laughs> okay. All in favor of uh, approving these road names, please say aye. 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 That's everyone, I believe. Any nays? All right. Yeah. So that was everybody. Uh, motion carries. Next up is item six, select board to certify annual highway mileage certificate for the state of Vermont highway aid. Uh, we do this every year. It's and for our state aid. Um, certain you get so much per mile. So we just have to say our mileage hasn't changed. And so that they do the calculation to determine our state aid. Or we could just shift some into, we should shift a bunch of it into class two. <laughs> Better aid bucket. Yeah. So rather than delaying further, I'd like to make the motion that we certify <laughs> the annual highway mileage certificate of the state of Vermont highway aid. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's everybody. So motion carries, thank you. Uh, next, uh, I'm going to do it all as one select board reports, old business or new business. I might have a little bit of new business if I might. Sure. I would just like to just to reiterate that the recreation department needs a new lining for the skating rink down at Atkins Field. I don't know how, but I would think we should do something about that. They have a budget. I 
I'd like to speak to that, Michael. Please. I've been trying to get them, talk them into buying a new liner and getting that skating rink going, but I'm getting a considerable pushback. And I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and just do it and make the executive decision. Okay, thank oh, you so much. I appreciate that. Can yeah. I just chime in that the reason why we pulled that skate rink out is because it was vandalized pretty badly. Yep, that we is true. We had installed one, um, but but there was glass in it, and then somebody must have walked on it or shot it with a BB gun or something, but it was all ripped up. So we yep. had to put it up. So I think the hesitation from the rec committee is buying a new one and knowing that the vandal vandalism has been a really big problem at um, Atkins Field over the past year. So there's just I'm some, very very aware of that. Yeah, there's hesitation there. So I think if if I think if there was a way that we could say let's do it but let's also think about if there's another location that would be safer this winter something like that this winter might be too late i don't know but that's why there's hesitation okay thank you i really appreciate everybody talking about that i mean i see a lot of kids down there when it is down there and it's utilized the way it should be but i definitely understand the vandalism problems that have been going on down there lately that is uh that is on my radar um, that the liner that I was looking at was $130 on sale. Um, and I talked to Jason about it and he's in favor of it, but he's just, I, I I'm going to go to the next rec board, the rec meeting and find out where the, what we, what we need to do. Um, and definitely I'm aware of the vandalism and we are working to address that. Thank you very much. So, another, oh, go ahead, Jerry. Old business. We have any good news from USDA? We have anything at all? Nothing? Crickets? I, I sent them a, another email. Uh, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, and I have not received an email back. Okay. Um, it's very frustrating. Mm -hmm. I was just going to mention that the equity committee this past week met with Susanna Davis, who is the equity director for the state, which was really awesome. Um, she had a lot of really positive things to say about the work that we're doing in Hardwick and some of the recommendations that we're making to the town. Um, one of the things that the committee um, just sent this week, I can share it with the select board members as well, is um, Lucian Avery and Rutu Shaha, who is no longer on the committee, but um, the two of them worked together to make some recommendations around um, the town website, um, specifically adding uh, information in our history section about indigenous peoples, um, as well as a couple of other like small recommendations. So um, expect to see more things coming your way from the equity committee. Great. Any other reports, new business, old business? I, I do have one, one other thing on the grant thing. I got an email from Borac today. They're extending their decision making they've again got lot, they've got a lot of great projects um so they're pushing back the deadline to make a decision so uh hey, do they give you a date uh, i believe january 17th was when they were going to try to decide by okay um yeah uh okay where are we at? I think that's it, except we need a motion to go to executive session, which are we doing that on a separate Zoom? Yes, I'll just need the motion. Um, so it's gonna be, give us like five or six minutes. Yeah, Good. Yeah, yeah, of course. We can have a, everybody can have a short body break. Yep. Okay. So no, motion. To adjourn. To adjourn, no, to go to executive session. Oh, go to executive session, sorry. Second. All right. All in favor. And that please. is, oh, just so we're clear, that is um, the one BSA 313 for personnel matter. Yes. Thank you. Aye. Yeah. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. So that's everyone. Um, all right. So we're going to log off this and we're going to see you on the, on the other bat channel in just a minute. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye.